right, welcome to opening campfire. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Before we start the show, we just have a couple announcements for you guys. Uh, first announcement is, we do ask that you wear a mask. Uh, as you can tell, us performers are not wearing a mask, but we are taking uh, precautions to make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe and keeping you safe. We do temperature checks at meal times. We isolate within the department and we monitor our symptoms. And then the second thing is, is please stay with your crew slash cohort. This also helps mitigate the spread of COVID-19 uh, as well as contact tracing. Uh, once again, thank you all for coming. Canada. Spent most of my early life in different schools and universities, but I'm 
Try to just to study nature without getting up close and personal with you. That's where I'll get stuck. That's when it hits me. You didn't feel out of place among all the cowboys? Of course I did. But I never felt out of place among the trees and the animals. It is very easy to feel lost out there. Especially when you actually are, and I speak from experience on that point. But if you take a moment to stop and take in your surroundings, I promise you will know that you are exactly where you need to be. Wow, you should teach a class on this or something. You know, I actually used to. I helped form the Boy Scouts of America for that exact purpose. I just know that I look myself. No way! Oh. I'm a scout! Really? You are? Yeah, and so are they. Ah! Wonderful. I don't suppose any of you, any of you are aspiring naturalists? I'd love to share notes and possibly track down that wolf, because she is not it. No, I don't know about that. Some of them are wilderness pledge geas. Ah, excellent. If that is your job, please stand up so I can see it. I have words for you all. You're all in a bank top job ahead. Go sit down. It's a shame to hear that the wolves and the grizzlies are gone. No, no, please stay standing. I am talking to you all. It's a shame to hear that the wolves and the grizzlies are gone. And I know all too well about the scars this land from wildfires. In certain ways, it's not the place it once was, but you all have taken on responsibility of protecting it from here on out. And maybe one day, you'll undo the damage done by those who came before you. Thank you for listening to me now. Sit down. You really care about this place, don't you? I do. It means a lot of things to a lot of people. This world, this natural world, including that horse. We'll take care of you, but you must take care of it as well. Oh, the natural world will take care of you, or financially, that is. Who's that? I don't know. Howdy, everybody. My name is Lucian Maxwell. I used to be the sole proprietor of this here land. In fact, everything you see here today was once owned by me. Heck, I own more land than the governor of Delaware or the king of Luxembourg. I read about you in school. You were the largest landowner in U.S. history. That's right, little girl. Why, you and all these wonderful people are here, Brett Philmont. You've been chatting down parts of the old Santa Fe Trail. It's the backbone of the Southern Fur Trade, and South Tooth of Time got its name. If you look over there between those two rocks, you'll see a two black peaks sticking up. Lights of Tooth of Time. Ooh. Wow. Ah. Yes. That's right. Now, it was called that because people chugging down the old Santa Fe Trail. They knew that once they saw that, they were about two weeks away from Santa Fe itself. Plus, the tooth was used to mark time. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm confused about something. How did you acquire all this land? It, it. Say what now? Well, you said you owned all this land, right? Huh? But how'd you end up with it all? Oh, well. Ah, well, you see, <coughs> I bought it from my good friend, Guadalupe Miranda. You may have heard this being referred to as the Miranda Land Grant or the Maxwell Land Grant. Maxwell Land Grant! Mm. <laughs> Who owned it before that? Oh, 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 he bought it from Mexican government. <laughs> But who owned it before that? Ah. Uh, well, hmm, hmm. Uh, that, that's, that's where things get a little <coughs> complicated. <coughs> I think I'm ready to sing another song. No, no. I think this needs to be addressed. The truth is, there are people here long before any of us arrived. Some still live in the area. Some of you recently for Maxwell and I to have seen. Yeah. Some have gone long before settlers like us arrived. How long? Good question. Well, <coughs> the ancient Puebloans lived here thousands of years ago. And you can still see their writing and artwork preserved in stone. After that came the Taos people who lived just up the road away. After that came the Ute and Apache people who live on reservations quite far from here. But for a time, for centuries actually, they called this land their home. And there's still many places named after them. Places we can still find evidence of their old lives. Well, I guess you could say this place has traded hands quite a few times. Mm, trading isn't quite the right word I would use, but as I said earlier, this place means a lot of things to a lot of people. So long as you are here, you must promise not to forget them. 
the history of this land is their history as well. You know, I think there is a song that fits. If, if you allow. About the land itself and what brings people to it. Eat it, boy. to carry over 100 pounds all the way from Cimarron up to Cypher's Mine. But I bet after a few days out on the trail, y'all will be old mountain goats just like me. Now, I bet you want to learn more about the history of gold mining in the area, huh? Great, well, I'll tell you. About a year after the Civil War, three guys were digging around in a creek over on the west side of Baldy. They were looking for copper. Lucky for them, they found something much better instead. Gold! Soon people were coming from all across the country to look for gold. Enough people that they formed their own town, called Baldy Town. Can you imagine that? People from all across the land, united by their pursuit of God's greatest good. Gold! I thought God's greatest good was sacrificing yourself for others. Well, they're about even. But I've talked on enough about all this gold panning mumbo jumbo. You'll learn more about gold mining if you visit French Henry. <laughs> Or my very own Cypher's Mine. Ooh, although I did just think of a great mine song we could all sing. 
Hit it, boys! Once I was afraid I was petrified. That song, you dunderheads! The other one!
Good advice. You seem about to lead a crew of, a crew of scouts into these mountains tomorrow morning, and... Oh, good. <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck. I'm just a teenager. I don't fit in here. Let me stop you right there. You see, I started heading west when I was only 16 years old. Set out with my twin brother Wyatt. The two of us were inseparable, taking on any adventures we could. Railroads, logging camps, hotels, even on a factory job for a while. Y'all did all that? We sure did. With your companion by your side, you can overcome any obstacle or hardship that comes your way. With my brother, I was able to achieve so much more than I could on my own. Now, uh, you said you were nervous about your trek? Yeah, that's right. You think I have what it takes? As long as you have courage, endurance, and leadership, you will undoubtedly lead your crew well on this trek. You've seen these traits in the men you have heard from tonight, and you will need them in the days to come. But it is far too easy to forget them. Does that answer your question? I think so. Thanks, I guess. Great. Um, while I have you here, let me share one last thing with you. Belmont Ranch is my family's summer home for more than 15 years. But eventually, we decided to move on. So I went looking for someone to take care of this place when I left. And you scouts are perfect. You have my trust. Now, I need you to trust yourself. Do you think you can do that? It's gonna be done. It's gonna be done. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I think I can. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. She said yes! Yeah. Yeah. Great. And it's time for you to wake up. Just like that? You can do that? Yeah, sure. If you wanted better writing, should have gone to Broadway. Another magical dream sequence, but this time we're returning to reality. Traveling back to Basecamp, Whitnorth is long dead. <laughs> we could not logistically facilitate a tornado. Chaplain Dave and Valinas Pledge Guias, stand with your crew leaders. 
Raise your right hand in scout sign and take the Philmont Leadership Pledge. Repeat after me. I promise. I promise. To serve my crew faithfully. To serve my crew faithfully. To accept the responsibilities of my position. To accept the responsibilities of my position. And to put the well-being of my crew first. And to put, put the well-being of my crew first. Two. Stay standing. Crew members, look around you. The young people you see standing here have agreed to lead you in your journey. But no matter how well they do their job, they need your support if the track is to be a success. So with that in mind, let's show our support for, their, for our leaders as they take a seat. Woo! Philmont is a special place, but it is no different from the land north or south of here. But there is a magic to this place, and it's here because of us. It's our history, our memories, and our stories that make this ranch special. The tales that you will live and tell in the coming days are part of Philmont's ever-growing story. So treasure them greatly and share them liberally. We now ask that you join us in one last song, the song that ends every Philmont campfire. Please rise, remove your hats, please refrain from saying mountains, and join us in the Philmont hymn. <laughs> chapter begins. Your chapter. Good night, good luck, and good scouting. And welcome to Philmont! Woo!